Let the church say amen. Church say amen again. God is good how often? And all the time. Look over somebody close and able. God loves you. And I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break. I love it too. Amen. Amen. Certainly is a, just one more blessing that God has given us here on this day that we will come back gathered in this place for no other purpose, as has already been stated, than to worship, uplift, and praise God's holy and his divine name. Good to see those that have come out um, back out here on this um, afternoon. And uh, someone mentioned to me um, this morning, I'm not going to call the name. Um, they said, well, preacher, you know, don't talk about me. Last Sunday evening, you said I wasn't there. I was watching from home. Well, you may be watching right now, but we miss you. We wish you were here. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And we're thankful for those that have came out here on this afternoon. If you have your Bible, we're going to be going to the book of Acts chapter number two. Book of Acts chapter number two, and we're going to begin at verse number 41, concluding with verse number seven. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, and what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we offer for. everything to God in prayer. That was a man, I got to tell you, that was a man that had died and he went to heaven. And when he got to heaven, he was met at the gate by Peter. And Peter took the man down the stroll, down the golden streets, and they was passing all these beautiful homes and passing all these beautiful mansions until they got to the end of the road where there was just a little shack at the end. And the man said, well, why couldn't I get a mansion that we passed by? Why did I have to get this hut? Peter said, we did the best with the money that you sent us. <laughs> Oh, I wonder what kind of home we going to have one of these days. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse number 41. <laughs> That'll preach by itself. <laughs> and the Bible says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and their goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those that were being saved. I'm sure many of us could probably quote that in our sleep. Um, but on to this afternoon, I want to talk about simply the church that's in your Bible. The church that's in your Bible. That's, that, that's good even in 2020. It's good for us to know about the church that's in your Bible. Because each and every day that we live, many people are coming up with new ideas. They're coming up with new ways. They're coming up with new thought patterns. But it's, it's good for us to understand that as the word of God says, that God's word was the same yesterday. Today, it's going to be the same even forevermore. God does not change. Seasons change. Times change. And people change. But God's word does not change. It is going to be the same forevermore. So we're here in Acts chapter 2. We know this is the day of 
Pentecost. But here on the day of Pentecost, on that day, we know that the church was established on the day of Pentecost. We believe that, right? We believe that the church was established. We remember back in Matthew chapter 16 when Peter was having a conversation with Christ. And after Peter revealed to them that he had knowledge of who Christ was, Christ said to him, he said, your name was Simon, now your name is Peter. And upon this confession of which you made, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not be able to prevail against it. Then he told Peter, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom. Now, first of all, we need to understand what did he mean when he said, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. When he said that he would give Peter the keys to the kingdom, it did not mean that Peter would be the first pope. Because the major belief is that Peter was the first pope and that he got his authority to be the pope when God gave him the keys. Literally, they believe that God gave him some keys to the church so that made him the supreme leader, the supreme ruler over the church. That is not what he meant. He meant, Peter, since you already have recognition of who I am, I'm going to give you a word on that day, on the day of Pentecost. And we know that he preached that word and after he got through preaching that word, the Bible says about what 3,000 souls were added to the body of Christ and the church was established on that day and we know as I said in our day people are coming up with all kinds of unorthodox ideas things that are outside the perimeter of what the Bible has to say and I would have you to know that if God set it up God knew how to set it up and if God laid it out God knew how to lay it out and if God put it together God knew exactly how to put it together God don't need me or nobody else coming along behind him trying to correct something that he's already established trying to correct something that he's already built for us to do that for us to try to go in and correct something that God has already put together we are saying God you didn't know what you was doing God, you left something out. God, you started the work, but you did not complete the work that you started. But I'd have you to know that God, the work that he started, he also finished that work before he left. Jesus knew for what purpose he came into the world, and that was to save man from his sin. Where can man find salvation from his sin that can only be found in Christ, and you access that through baptism? Where can you get that? In the Lord's church. So when one is looking for a church, the first thing we want to make sure is that it got the right message. You, you want to go somewhere where they are teaching the right message. You know, you know, a sign can be misleading. You can look from the outside and think that it's another thing on the inside until you actually go and hear what is being taught. It is, it, it is imperative that we understand where you're going if you're seeking a church that you have to understand, make sure that what they are teaching and what they are preaching can be found in the word of God. Because should be told, there are many people that are claiming Christ. There are many people that are proclaiming to be ministers of the gospel of Christ. But those things that they are saying, those things that they are teaching, cannot be found within the word of God. And my preacher says it like this, if it ain't in the book, you ain't nothing but a crook. If it ain't in the book, you ain't nothing but a crook. If you are teaching anything other than can what be found in the word of God, you are teaching false doctrine. Now, now, uh, now in, in, in the very fact that God let us know that there was a true way, he identified also there was a false way. Because whenever God makes a real thing, the devil got to always come up with a counterfeit. But we know that the counterfeit, no matter how hard it tries to look like the real thing, it'll never be the real thing. It might look like a gold ring, but try and go sell it for a gold ring price. You're not going to get the same thing that you would get for something that was real. Now you want to make sure that they got the right message about Jesus. Everybody claims to be preaching from the same Bible. Everybody claims to be serving the same Jesus. So why is it that we're not all teaching the same message? Why is it that we don't all have the same beliefs when it comes to the word of God? That lets me know that there's a problem not with God, but with man. There's a problem with man and not the word of God. Because you mean to tell me if all of us are reading the same Bible, getting our, getting our information from the same place, then how is it that we're coming up with this way, we're coming up with that way, we're coming up with this way and that way, that lets me know that there's a problem with men. 
with those that are interpreting the word of God. And this has been an issue since the word of God even came about. Ever since Jesus died and went back to glory, even before there were people that were trying to dilute and infiltrate the word of God. They wanted to make sure, it's just like Satan in, in the Garden of Eden. He's trying to say what well, God didn't mean exactly what he said, you know. Or he said that, you know, you'll die, but you know, if you eat it, you're not going to surely die. You know, Satan always wants to creep in and plant doubt wherever the truth of God is. So we want to make sure that they are teaching the right message about Jesus and that is that Jesus was God in the flesh. He was not just a mere man and even in religions today we have people that are the head of religions that are claiming to be Christ incarnate. It, it, to, for the, 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 one of the names of the Pope is the Vicar of Christ. That means that he is God Christ's representative on earth. And that whenever he sits on his throne, whatever comes out of his mouth is the words of God because his throne literally gives him a direct line to heaven. Well, my Bible lets me know that God is no respecter of persons. So if you can have a relationship like that with God, why can't all of those that love God, believe in him, have been baptized? Why can't all of us have that kind of relationship with God? So you want to make sure that they are teaching the right message about Christ. You want to make sure that those that are preaching to you are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is that Christ lived, that Christ died, and on the third day he rose again with all power in his hands. You want to make sure that the church is teaching the right thing about sin. The Bible gives no leeway about sin. The Bible is crystal clear about those that, that, that commit sin. It exposes the terrible nature of sin. And we even dealt with a little bit this morning and lets us know that sin always leads into more trouble. Sin always leads to more trials. Sin always leads to more temptation. That's why the Bible said that we ought to flee from these lusts. We ought to flee from these desires. You know you got the power to tell Satan to get behind you. You don't have to keep facing this thing. You can tell Satan, get thee behind me. I'm trying to serve God. I'm trying to live for him. I don't have time for no stumbling blocks. I don't have time for any roadblock. And truth be told, you know, sometimes if we're not careful, we can become a roadblock for our own selves. So you want to make sure that the church that you're looking for is teaching the right thing about salvation salvation you want to make sure that the people understand that salvation is in christ alone salvation is not in a man salvation is not in a religion salvation is not in a ritual salvation can only be found in jesus christ and he said in his word he said if i be lifted up from the earth he said what i'll draw all men unto me so many people trying to lift themselves up trying to elevate themselves they're using this opportunity that they get to preach the word of god to put themselves on some kind of higher plane so people will look at them as some kind of way but at the end of the day I don't care who you are I don't care how well you articulate and preach the word of God at the end of the day you ain't made of nothing but a big old heaping pile of dust and one of these days you're gonna go back to the earth that gave you God is the only one that holds salvation so you must make sure that the word that is being preached has a clear message about salvation that can only be found in Jesus Christ. And then you wanna make sure that you understand who's the head of the church. No man is the head of the Lord's church. Christ is the head of the church. I don't care who you are, what position you may hold at the end of the day, Christ is the head of the church. He owns it because he died for it. He shed his blood on Calvary's cross and he paid a price for it. Do you know the church is also the bride of Christ? And he tells you in the Bible, he said that the relationship, he mirrors it also, almost like a husband and wife. He tells him, he said, husband, love your wives. Just as Christ also has loved the church. And not only loved the church, but the Bible said that he gave himself up for it. 
Now, if we were so important, if the church in the Bible was so important that Christ was willing to give up his life for it, don't you think it's important for us to want to find out what church that is? Don't you think it's important for us to try and find out where we can find where people are practicing these things that the Bible is doing? I ain't trying to do things that's just going to draw massive crowds and get people in here. Oh, man, we're having a good time. Things are looking good, but if there is no sound teaching of the word of God, if you are not giving people the basic principles of the Bible and salvation, my brother, my friend, you ain't preaching. What, 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 what do we come together for other than to preach the unadulterated gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? I didn't say a watered down gospel. So many people want to preach watered down message so that, so, so that it, won't, it won't affect anybody. The word of God should have an effect on somebody. Whether that's, a, whether that's a good or whether you perceive that as a bad thing, the word of God ought to affect you. When the word of God is preached, the word of God is described as a two-edged sword. That means if you want to hold in it or you're the one receiving it, it's going to cut you. That's just how the word of God is. It's not pointing out the sins of one individual, but if each and every person was to look in the mirror of the word of God, they would see themselves in their very same position and you want to make sure that the church has the right membership you want to make sure that the people are what we call saved that, that's what you want to make sure that's what you want to make sure you know you can tell about a people in a congregation you can go somewhere for the first time you don't have to speak to anybody you can just look at how people act you can just look at how people respond. You know, when people are looking for a church to go to, they look at stuff like that. They look to see if people speak when they walk in. They, they, they look to see if they just say, I, I got a crazy hairstyle or something. They look to see if somebody looking at them side eyes, somebody looking at them crazy. They look to see that and they're going to judge the entire body based off of the actions of two or three people. Simply because, though they be, simply because those were the attitudes that they met when they got there, that is how they're going to judge the whole body. And that's why we got to make sure that we are people that express love. We are people that express kindness. We are people that express the joy of the Lord. When you see somebody, you got a smile on your face. When you see somebody, hey, I may not have ever seen you in my life, but you are God's child and I love you with the love of the Lord. That's how we got to act towards people. So you want to make sure that the people are simply, look, following the guidelines of the word of God. Now understand this, everybody ain't going to live right. Every, it, simply put, everybody's not going to be saved. Even though God desires for everybody to be saved, we know everybody is not going to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's okay. That's okay. Everybody is not going to accept it. But we are still to do our job by sharing the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And even if only one soul's here, guess what? That is one soul that you have gained for the cause of Christ. That is one soul that the devil lost and God has gained. So you, that it says that this church right here, that they walk in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, and, and, and the breaking of bread. The Bible said that they had all things common. Now, you know, that's something right there. For all these people to be together, ain't nobody saying, well, I want to do it like this. Well, I want to do it like that. Well, how, how about we do it like this? No, I like like that. No, I don't want grape juice for the, for the, I got some lemonade that I made over here. You know, I, I got some burgers that we can use for the bread. You know, I got, well, why can't we do it? They understood because they themselves had been with Christ. Christ had told them what to do. They had heard from his very own mouth how they were to do things. They understood the very same way they all had one thought in mind. So how is it to Today, we got so many thoughts. We got so many ways. And it's just, it comes down to one truth, and that is that men simply think that they have a better way than God has. Men, men think that they have a better way than God has. And you say, well, well preacher, you know, that, 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 that all, you know, that stuff, you know, sounds good. You know what? Well, any place is just as good as another. 
So, so, so you're telling me that any place is just as good as another. And, and if you are going to understand, if you agree with me that one has to be saved in order to go to heaven, if you agree with me that in order to obtain salvation, one has to have their sins washed away, if you agree with me that in order for one to have their sins washed away, then one must come in contact with the blood of Jesus. If you agree that one must come in contact with the blood of Jesus and you understand that the only way that that can happen is through baptism, and you have one place that preach baptism and the other don't preach baptism, then how can you say that one place is just as good as another? Because in one place people are being saved, and in another place they don't have the opportunity to be saved. So you cannot say that one place is just as good as another. You can't mean to tell me that if you have the choice between great value and Coca-Cola that you ain't going to choose Coca-Cola. Because you want the real thing. Then you want to make sure that the church has the right worship. You want to make sure that they are worshiping together. I know it may be just the Alabama thing, but there are churches in Alabama that don't have church on the fifth Sunday. They, they go first, second, third, and fourth. But on Field Sunday, they say, no, nah, this is our free Sunday. We go where we want. You know, we don't have church, you know, on Field Sunday. Then you got some church, you know, that you know, still have it just first and third. You know, then on the second, fourth, and fifth, you know, we go, you know, we do, you know, whatever we want to do. But the Bible said that upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, that Paul preached unto them, read to the part on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And that very same scripture deals with an important part of our worship service, and that is communion. You have some people that take it monthly. Some people take it quarterly. Some people take it annually. Some people take it semi-annually, and some take it neverly. But the Bible said that upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, continued his speech until midnight. So that says that we are to partake of the Lord's Supper upon the first day of the week. The only way that you can skip it is if you find a week that ain't got a first day. And if you find a week that ain't got a first day, then you ain't got to take it. But if you have a week that has a first day, then you are to commune with the Lord this church this church that we have a model here they work together it says that the church had a common goal and a common good they were working towards a goal what is our goal to seek and to save those that are lost that's our goal. That, that, that is the reason we worship God. That is the reason we come so that we can attain knowledge on how to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because we want, just like, just like Sir Peter's brother, before and Peter's brother, well, he didn't even know Christ. He wasn't the one that met Christ when he was Simon. He didn't met Christ. His brother was the one that heard about Christ. Came running to Peter and said, hey, bro, I found the Messiah. He was so happy and he was so excited that he had found out who Christ was that he wanted to go back and tell his brother. He wanted to tell those that he was connected with about this Jesus that he had found. If you have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, if you are saved and you're in the Lord's church, why not wouldn't you want to share that message with others that you come in contact with your family, with your friends, with your associates. You should want everybody around you to know the God that you're serving. And then you want to make sure that the church got the right head. You know, today, there are titles that can't be found in the Bible. Archbishop. Presiding prelate. Pontiff. Apostles. Prophet, prophetess. <laughs> So, so, so many, so many times, and, 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 and that, that ain't even starting to list off. It, it continues to go on and on. Where did people get this authority to give themselves titles that cannot be found within the word of God? Where did God ever give us the leeway to say, oh, well, you know what? Well, I like this name, so I'm just going to give it to myself. And, and it, even right here in the city, I was told about it. I heard a conversation about it. But I passed the building the other day, and it, it said that the preacher's name was Queen Esther. Queen in the Lord's church. I, 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 you know, from uh, a queen in the, in the Lord's church. 
There's no royalty in the body of Christ. Ain't nobody better than nobody else in the body of Christ. Ain't no little eyes and no big U's in the body of Christ. Well, you, that's why when he went, when, when God sent him to Simon, the, 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 the Tanner's house, and after he had saw all those four-footed beasts in that dream that God had showed him while he was there, and he woke up and said, now I perceive that God is no respecter, a person God don't put nobody above, nobody here. We are all the same in the eyesight of God. But if you give people the chance, they'll elevate themselves above others so that you'll look at them. And what people make the mistake of is that so many people got more faith in their preacher than they do God. People got more faith in their pastor than they do God. They got more faith in, in this and in this board that they're a member of and this and that more than they have in God. We got to recognize that worship ain't got nothing to do with us. Worship ain't got nothing to do with how we feel. Worship ain't got nothing to do with what we desire. Worship is all about God. And when we come into the house of God, when we worship him, it ought to be done in accordance with the word of God. Can, can I tell you, if we were to just lose the left side of our mind, and to go outside the realms of scripture and do some stuff, the ch it, pe more people may come for that. But will their souls be saved? Well, well, that's the question. Will their souls be saved? At the end of the day, it's not about entertainment. Oh, it, it just makes me feel so good inside. It's not about how you feel. It's about the word of God. God left us a plain pattern. He left us a plain path. And I don't know how people that can claim Christ and his word can teach something other than what God has in the Bible. I've looked at it in the Hebrew. I've looked at it in the Greek. I've looked at it in the Aramaic. It all looked the same to me. So how are we getting all these different versions? How are we getting all this and all that? We need to stick with the word of God. Because it is the word of God that is going to judge us in the last day. And you know what? It's a sad truth. So many people blindly follow what they grow up behind. As long as they've been alive, this is how it's been done. That's how we did it. It's almost like a, a, a young lady. Um, one day she was uh, cooking a ham. It was Thanksgiving time. She was cooking a ham. Y'all know this story, I'm sure. She was, she was, she was, she was cooking a ham, and uh, and yeah, you know, you know, you know, be lying so y'all know the story. Get to the end of it, and, 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 and she wanted to know why her, her grandma was cutting off the end of the ham. She wanted to know why her great grandma was cutting off the end of the ham. So she get to it, come to find out her pan wasn't big enough. So you see, people do stuff that they've seen, that they've been around, yeah. that they've been accustomed to. And when you grow up in an environment like that, you don't question it. You, you, don't, you don't ask it because you know, that's what you know, that's what you see. But when you go to the word of God, Come on, pray. and when you see what the word of God has to say, right. you ain't got no choice but to accept the word of God. Amen. If you agree with me, that the Bible is the infallible word of God, that it is perfect without controversy, that it is the right, the word of God, that God breathed this, that when it said that God breathed the word into the minds of these people, they, they didn't just write what they wanted to write, what they wrote, God inspired them to write what they wrote. And you mean to tell me that God will put us here and give us wrong direction? He would not do that. He would not. he would not do that. Can I tell you, a child, as I say, with an honest heart can understand God's will for their life. Right. They can understand it because the word of God is simple. It is plain. It is only we as human beings that try to complicate it. So preacher, you mean to tell me that there's a church that can be found in the Bible. Yes, sir. There's a church that can be found in the Bible. Yes, sir. And if you look from Genesis unto Revelation, yes, you will not find 99% of the ones that we know about today. So far removed 
away from what the original church was when it was established. There's a church that can be found in our Bible. It was prophesied about all throughout the Old Testament about something that was coming. You know, as I've already mentioned, when Peter was having a conversation with Christ, we know, we know, we know it all so well. When he was talking to him, he said, Thou Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not be able to prevail against it, and I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. Well, one only needs keys if they need access. One only needs keys if they need entry. Where are you going to use these keys? Well, we talked about here in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says that when they came together down on the day of Pentecost, they were gathered together there in the upper rooms. There were Parthians, Medes, and Eliamites and dwellers from Mesopotamia and Cappadocia and Asia and they were gathered together and the Bible says that they came as a sound of a mighty rushing wind from heaven and it filled the place that they were sitting and it sat upon them cloven tongues likened unto fire those sitting around looking at those men saying aren't these men not drunk they said these men are not drunk seeing it as but the ninth hour of the day but this is that which was prophesied by Joel that in the last day I pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see vision. This was that which was prophesied by Joel, and it was coming to pass on the day of Pentecost. So what preacher said that they received the, the you know, the, the spirit came down, and it sat upon them like cloven tongues, like fire. Well, why can't I speak in tongues? Well, you have to understand why God did what he did when he did what he did. If you got people from all regions around coming together. Just say if you had people from all lands in here right now and they were listening to me, you got some people that ain't never heard English a day before in their life. Some people that don't know how to hear. So if I'm just up here, everything that I'm saying is just gonna sound like jippity jap, jippity jap, chop chop going on up here. They're not gonna understand a thing that I'm saying. That is why God gave those men the power to speak in such a way that all those that were gathered there would be able to understand exactly what they were saying. And, and, and for us today, the spirit came, the spirit has already, Ascending, the spirit is already here. So, what good does it do to tarry until the Holy Ghost come down? Because we've already read it that the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38 that once one is baptized, that you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, preacher, I got the Holy Ghost, but I ain't been baptized. How is that possible? Well, Cornelius got it, true. But after he received the gift of the Spirit, he was also baptized. For the remission of his sins. It's important for us to understand what God has laid out. How God has laid it out. So we won't be pulled and tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine that comes along. We need to revisit this word. We need to revisit the principles of the word of God. To bring back to your remembrance why you first believed in the first place. To bring to your remembrance that day, I don't know if it was a Sunday, Wednesday, whatever day it was, when you heard the preacher preaching. And man, it was like somebody had lit a fire up under you and you just had to get up. You had to go down and say, hey man, hey, I, I, hey you give up, I give up, you win. I, I believe what you're saying. I believe it, it's enough for me. I wanna be saved. Amen. Salvation, my friend, is a free gift, but it came out of my high price free gift free to us but it cost Christ his very life he was willing to die for the church the Bible says that he purchased the church with his own blood and it says that we are the bride of Christ and if the Bible tells us as men that you can't have more than one wife why would Christ have more than one church if the church is his bride Think about it like that. Think about it. If, if the church is the bride of Christ, it is the body, it, it is the bride of Christ, Christ wouldn't have more than one wife and then tell you you can have more than one. He's coming back for his church. He said he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And when he comes back, he's going to do the separation. He knows those that are his and those that are not his. The Bible says that in that day there are many there are gonna be many folk that have said, Oh, did we not prophesy in your name? 
Uh, you know, you, you know, those of you that scare you, I know y'all have been scared some mornings you wake up and you went to sleep and left BET on the TV and you wake up and Peter pop off and all them on there just going out. Ah, money, 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 you know what I'm saying? Send me $50. I send you and all that. Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not, did we not do this? And God said, he's going to look at him and say, I never knew you. Depart from me. Cast into the lake of fire. Man, what a sad day it would be to have lived all your life thinking you had it right and to wake up and meet God knowing that you had it all wrong. So today that you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. God's word is true. God's word is right. He's only waiting on us to accept it by obedience to his word. And you come by hearing that word, believing it, and repenting of your sins, confessing Christ as your Savior. Being baptized with him in the watery grave of baptism. Have your sins washed away, done away with. Never to come up before you in this life and neither the life that is to come. This is the only way that one can get into the kingdom. This is the only way that one can get into the body. It's, it's not like let's make a deal. You can't pick a door. There's only one door. And <laughs> that is the door that God has gave us. Now you can either go through that door. Or there's a zone waiting on you one of these days. Amen, somebody? So if you're here today, you're subject to the invitation. If you're here and you're already a Christian, but you just need prayer on tonight, you, you will come at this, at this time as we together stand and sing the song of invitation. <laughs>